Hello and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where I'm writing a game engine from scratch. It's been an amazing journey writing this code, I can't believe we made it so far. But somehow I have a feeling that this is just the beginning of our quest to create a great game engine. That's why I gladly continue our path to greatness. Okay, in the last video I started working on the view model behind this control that would allow us to create a new project from project templates. But I didn't quite finish it yet because uh, although we already have this list of templates and we can type in a name and a location for the projects, we can't create one yet. So in order to finish this, I want to do two things, two more things. First, I'm going to write a little validation uh, method to make sure that whatever we type in here for name and path of the project is will be correct. And second, I'll be writing a method that uh, actually creates the new project in our location. Okay, in the view model for new project, Let's create a private method that returns a boolean and it's called validate um, project path. And all it does is check whether the values in uh, project name and project path are well valid values for a file to exist on, um, on this platform. So first I'll put this uh, project path in a local variable And then check if uh, it ends with a valid directory separator. Directory separator is these slashes, uh, like a forward or backward, backward slash. And uh, there is a function in .NET that can get what this character is. So I can type in if, if this path ends in directory separator, and uh, I can give this path to as an argument to this function, and then it returns a boolean. So if it ends with uh, like this uh, slash, then it's okay. But if not, I need to append um, such a separator to the end of it because my convention is that uh, the uh, folders uh, that are not file names, just a directory name. Uh, they end. They need to end with such a slash or a separator, actually. Okay, and next I'm going to append the project name to the end of this path. Now we have a path like this in my documents and uh, all uh, primal projects will go in here, except when the user chooses to pick another location, but for now uh, it can go in here. And all our game projects will have their own folder, of course. So that's why I append this project name to the end of uh, this location. And now we have a full path to our uh, uh, project. I'm going to create two more properties that I can use to indicate whether this uh, project path is valid or not. One of them is a Boolean. By the way, to type these kind of properties faster, like I just did, I have a code snippet included in, in the project. Uh, you can find it here in VS Code Snippets. And you can import this to Visual Studio, like so, uh, going to Tools, Code Snippet Manager. And then you can either import it or add uh, to it. And in my case, it's in here. 
So bindable property, you can uh, the shortcut is pprop instead of regular prop for regular properties. And whenever you type that in, you can uh, it create it creates this for you, and then you can just type in the the name and the type of the property. Uh, one thing I have to do manually is because I can't. Um, it doesn't allow me to uh, make upper cases. I have to make the property name start with an uppercase myself. This is um, a property that indicates whether uh, the name or a path um, are valid. So I'll set it to, well, that's not needed actually, never mind. And I need an error message if something is not uh, right. So I can let the user know what, uh, what's missing or what's wrong with the a name and the path of the project. So this error is a string and it's called error message. Now going back to our validation method, I can set its valid uh, to false initially, and then do my checks for the uh, project name and project path. First thing I was I want to check is uh, whether this um, whether the project name is null or empty. In other words, if the user typed in uh, anything, uh, right? So if the user only uh, types in spaces, a couple of spaces or a tab character, then it's obviously not valid. So uh, I'll remove these, the, those white spaces here. And if uh, this is true still, then we have an error. So error message must be that we need to type, a, um, type in a project name. Okay, next I'm going to check if uh, there are any invalid characters in a project name. This get invalid file name characters gives us an array of characters and I can find out uh, whether one of these characters is in project name by searching for it. So index of any gives me if any of uh, these characters is in here. And if it can't find any of these characters, then it would give me a minus one a value other than minus one if it can find any of this. So if it's not minus one, that means that there are invalid characters in my project name. And that's also an error. Okay, uh, next I'm going to do the same with uh, project path. So basically I'll repeat uh, this line. And then I'm going to do a check for invalid characters in the path as well. So this one is project path. And instead of uh, invalid file name characters, I'll get invalid uh, path characters. Finally, I am going to check if uh, the project path or a full path that we have here already exists. And uh, if that's, if it's not empty, then we have a problem. Uh, so we, that's an error as well. So I check if this path exists, which wouldn't be a problem if it would be empty but uh, I can here enumerate uh, or get all the files and uh, subfolders, if any. 
And if that's the case, that means that this path is not empty and we can't create a new, um, a new project in it. These are all the checks that I can think of right now. So if uh, those are all passed, then we don't have um, any uh, problem creating uh, the new project. So the error message is just an empty string. We don't have any error and is valid is true. And then I return is valid. Okay. So this uh, method needs to be called every time a project name or project path are uh, modified. So I'm going to uh, call it here once here in project name and here in project path. And I don't think I have to do well. Let's do it here as well, just to be sure that at the end of our construction, everything is okay. Okay, let's test and see if um, if it works. Um, yeah, I want to actually use, before I run this, I want to use this is valid and error message in our control as well. So I'm going here. And uh, this button create should be disabled if uh, is valid is false. So here I can set um, is enabled and I'm binded to is valid. We can immediately see that it's disabled because the initial value of is valid is false. And then I would like to include the error message at the end of um, underneath these buttons. So I'll create a text block and bind its uh, text to the error message that we have. Now I can uh, run this and then see if um, if that if it works. So for example, if I would type in something illegal in project name uh, plus apparently is okay. Uh, what is illegal? Um, okay, no, it's uh, it's not um, that it doesn't work. <laughs> I have to I have to make these text boxes um, update their uh, their property while I'm typing. Right now, they only update when I. Uh, when they lose focus or when I uh, click, uh, when I press enter. So for example, if I type in a bunch of weird characters here, then you see that there is an invalid character um, error message here. And it's on the wrong place as well. So I'm going to fix that as well. Here in project name, Update source trigger should be on uh, property changed. So every time I type in a new letter or a new character, it updates the property. And the same holds for uh, project path as well. And for the placement of this uh, text, I need of course to use a horizontal alignment instead of the vertical, so it will uh, center it horizontally. Now if I go here and type in weird characters, then I'll get this error. Yeah. And the same in um, the uh, in the project's name. Like if I type a pipe character, then 
then it gives me an error invalid characters used in project path. And otherwise it would be in project's name, which makes also um, the create button go uh, grayed out. It's disabled. Okay, now I'm done with the validation method. I can go ahead now and write a method to create a project. So this one is a public method, uh, create project. I of course need to know which one of those templates uh, I need to create. So I am going to give an argument to this function, one of those project templates. As a last check, I'm going to um, to validate the path and then project name again. And if it's not valid, then I return return nothing. I of course need to return something. Um, I'm going with a string. This will be the location of the newly created game project. So I'll eventually return a path. So is, if is valid um, is not true, then I'll return an empty string. Otherwise, I'm going to check if it ends again li like this. Um, except uh, I'm going to to correct the project path itself if uh, it's not ending with these separators. And this full path of the project is just the project path and the project name. Okay, first of all, I'm going to check if the directory that uh, we are going to use for the project already exists. It's okay if it already existed, but it needs to be empty. And if it doesn't exist, I need to create it. Now I need to um, create all these uh, subfolders in our project folder. Of course, I need to append the full path to uh, these folders because these folders are just the name of the folder and not a full path. So, um, like I did before, I'll get full path and then combine uh, combine them together. So this will create all these uh, folders, the subfolders in our uh, game uh, project folder. And uh, there was one folder that needs to be uh, hidden and that was that uh, .primal folder for local bookkeeping for the editor. And I can make that hidden here. And that's all I have to do to make sure that this folder is hidden. Next, I'm going to copy over the icon and the screenshot. The source is template uh, icon pa file path, of course. I'm using dear info that we created here because it already contains the, the full path of, 
of the project so I don't have to do this kind of stuff again. Now I can uh, do the same for the screenshot. The purpose of the screenshot is of course that or the idea behind this is that whenever you work on a game project and you save it then it will also save the the view that you are uh, having at that moment to uh, to this uh, screenshot. So when you're going to, through a list of your projects, you can see what the games you have been working on look like. Next, I have to copy over the project uh, file itself. That is the description of uh, the game, everything in the game, right? So this is the uh, project primal that we had in the template. So now if I go here in the editor, uh, project templates, and I don't have a project file here, it's the same situation as we had with this template. So I'm going to just create an empty file and then write to it and then copy paste it over to the other folders. Um, so here is a, a project.primal. Okay, in order to be able to write a project file, we first need to know actually what the project is. The project is the central uh, data structure that holds everything together in a game editor and it contains pretty much everything that is in the game. It has scenes, and the idea behind the scene is that in the traditional game, you had these levels, and each level is a scene. So you have uh, the first level and a loading screen, and then the second level, and the first level is a scene, as a loading screen is a scene, and the second level is another scene. But nowadays games have this continuous loading screen less kind of um, structure and um, in those uh, the idea of scenes still exists but then you have scene transitions so if you go from one area of your game world to another one you have uh, sometimes these elevator loading scenes or uh, a small corridor or a hall that the player uh, waits in for um, a certain amount of time and the scene transitions uh, happen. And that's when the the chunk of the world when where the character uh, left and is not uh, able to see anymore gets unloaded and the new chunk of the world where the character is going to gets uh, loaded and that's the new scene. So this is a list of those levels or chunks of the world, uh, depending on what kind of game uh, we are going to create. And each scene, of course, uh, contains the objects in the world, like the player character, uh, the lights, and the cameras, and it contains game entities. And each entity has components. Uh, for example, uh, a component that all entities must have is a transform component, and that's just the position and the orientation and the scale of the entity. Even if the entity doesn't have any geometry to be rendered, it at least has to have a position, right? So it has a list of components as well. Uh, for now, because I just want to um, save a project to a file, I need uh, some type of class that has a list of scenes and a name. So that's basically an empty project. Each project has to have at least one scene and the scene might be empty completely in the case of empty an empty project. So let's create a class for a project and a class for scene and give this project a list of scenes with just one scene in it. Here I go back to my solution. Uh, I haven't returned a string here yet. Uh, so let's 
in case of an error, return a string, an empty string. So just return this. And for now also return an empty string. So it doesn't give us an error. So we can at least build the project. And in a game project folder, just add a class for project. And this class will also uh, be a view model, uh, like, uh, like this one that we are uh, working with right now. And therefore it must, um, it must inherit from view model base. Okay, as I said, it has a name. And it has a path. That's just um, a location where it's created. Actually, since uh, these, the name and the path are not going to be changed. Well, once you create a project somewhere, it's there, right? So the uh, its path uh, won't change. So this one is uh, is private, and its name also doesn't change. So uh, it's a private, and it's actually a regular uh, property. So we don't need we don't need a backing field for it or anything. I need a constant to uh, indicate uh, the default extension of our project file. And for the convenience, uh, I make a, a property that's a getter. And that gives me the full path of the project. So that's its path and its name together. And we need a list of scenes. Um, the list is again an observable collection as I did uh, here for the project templates. I have a private one that I'm able to uh, modifi modify, uh, add and remove elements from it. And I have a public read-only observable collection to use with uh, controls that uh, display the list itself. Of course, we don't have this scene class yet, um, but I'm going to write the class in a minute. Next, I'm going to add another class for the scene. And again, scene is also a view model. So I need to uh, inherit from uh, view model base. And for now, I am going to give the scene a name and uh, a reference to its uh, the project that it's included in. We can uh, rename a scene, so that's uh, why I'm using this uh, property changed kind of um, property so we can bind to uh, the control that's displaying the scene name. And the scene um, is going to have a list of game entities as well, but uh, for now we are just doing empty scenes. Um, I'm going to add the list of game entities when we get to constructing the game entities and uh, the components, etc. So uh, this is good for now. One thing that I have to do now is um, because we are going to serialize this um, object to a file, to a, 
an XML file as well. Uh, again, I need to use data contracts. But the thing with the data contract is that if I would now put a data contract here, then I would get an error that would say that the base model also has to uh, be in the data contract. So first of all, I'm uh, going to uh, make this view model base also um, a data contract or serializable by appending a data contract as an attribute to it. And uh, because we are referencing back to an object, uh, so th there should be a reference to the project within the scene. Uh, so um, that is only possible if uh, I set this is reference um, property to true. Then we can have references to objects in the serialization uh, file. Now in project, I want uh, my XML to have the name uh, game instead of project. So this is a game. I'll use a data member attribute for each data member that I need to be saved. So for example, I want to save the name of the project um, and its path. And I need to save all the scenes as well. Because I'm using this, uh, this name, underscore uh, scene, um, I actually want to save it to, uh, under uh, scenes with capital S without underscore. And I can give it my own name uh, like so. Otherwise, it would just save underscore scenes. It doesn't really matter, but I think it would be if I were to go into that file and read it, then it would be uh, more clear for me what it is. And finally, I want to create a constructor for this. It takes a, a string for the name of the project and a string for the path of the project. All right, and a constructor for the for the scenes as well. The scene needs to have a project and a name. So this is a project the scene belongs to. So it's not so that we have multiple pro projects in the editor running and each scene can be swapped between projects, but it's just easier to have this project reference in the scene for the uh, game objects to retrieve more information about the project instead of getting it from somewhere else. Also, I'll assert that the project is not null. Okay, going back to um, to the new project view model, I can now create a project here with a name and a path. So project name. And uh, this full path that includes the location of the project. In a constructor, I'm for now going to add a default scene. Okay, so whenever I make a project, then the project will have a default uh, scene with one scene in it. 
next I can uh, try to write this to a file. Project file path is the source of the project. So it's, uh, it's basically this path and uh, this file name. Uh, but for now, I want to write to it in the new project location so I can copy it back here. So it needs to be a uh, path and then just a project name plus a project extension. And then I just, just return path. Okay, so um, this will hopefully write to uh, this project file and then I can use that to actually mm, see what, what will be in the project uh, file so I can, um, I can use that in the template. Uh, one thing I want to do first before uh, running this is I want to uh, write a handler for whenever I click on uh, create button. Uh, okay, I want to get a data context for the for this control, which is this uh, new project. Uh, class and then I want to create the project so uh, it will return a project path and then just call the create project um, method with uh, with this template list that we have and it's selected item as a project template. So we have this list and whatever template is selected uh, at the moment that we click on create, then that template will be used to used as the project template to create a new project with. And then I want this dialog window close altogether when we have made a choice. Check if we have a valid uh, project path. So if it's not empty, then we have I uh, got something back. It's a location of the new game project. So the dialogue result will, result will be true. And then I can go ahead and set this, um, uh, this dialogue result for the dialogue window and close it. Okay, now I'm ready to test the project. So I'm going to go back here. Uh, I see I need this to be primal projects. Build and run and see what happens. Choose a project and click on create. Now, if I go to this location, um, the, this uh, project, Primal Projects, I can see that uh, one is created here. Can go in here and there is a folder for the new project. It created uh, three new folders and it's going to make that Primal uh, folder hidden. So if I step to this, I uh, get an exception. Uh, what's, what does the exception say? 
uh, file parimol yeah of course parimol does not exist but primal does so let's do this again now it says this um, this already exists and is not empty okay that's good uh, I'm going to use another name for this and now if I do this then I can go to this new one and I can see that dot primal is hidden that's good and let's see if the serializer can serialize the project class and the scene that I just made no uh, something went wrong here let's see what it was Okay, um, I have to check if I made everything with a data member. Um, so this is good. Okay, let's cancel this and see. Uh, data contract is a data member. Path is a data member. And this one is good as well. Okay, of course I haven't uh, done this for the scene. I forgot that totally. Uh, so I'll do that now. Data contract and for the name, uh, I want a, a data member for the name as well. And for the project, there you go. Create. That's good. And we copied over the icon and screenshot. Make new project. Try to serialize and it uh, succeeded. That's good. Now I'm here. I got back a path, which is to uh, new project one. That's good, and uh, everything seems to be okay. Now, uh, let's go back and see what um, what it made. So, it's a project name. <laughs> uh, let me see what, um, what I try to do here. Uh, this project name needs to be like so, of course. Okay, so it made this XML file. Again, I'm going to rearrange stuff so I can read it better. So the name of the project is um, project new project one. The path is okay, and it has got a scene or a list of scenes uh, with one uh, default scene. That's good, and a, a project reference to this project. Now I'm going to copy back uh, this file to the template. So I can use it instead of having to create a project in the code, right? So I'll save this and then uh, copy this to templates. Okay, this should be um, gone. And this file should be the project file. Uh, 
and then I'll just um, add the name in the code. I'll just use format string to put a name and a path uh, in this. And for now, this should uh, do actually. Um, yeah, let's copy this to other folders as well. Now, instead of uh, writing to a file, I just uh, read it and insert the name of the project um, in the file. So here I will read the file first. And I use this location of the project path in the template. And um, I'll use string format to uh, insert the uh, name and the path of the project. Then I construct the full path of the project. And finally, I write it uh, back to where we are creating a new project. Let's see what happens now when uh, I create a project, for example, a third person. And uh, this one is two. All right, go back to the project um, location. Okay, uh, I can see here now that the name of the project is here. The file has the correct name as well. That's good and uh, I have this path. Okay, um, well, this uh, kind of concludes creating the uh, creating new projects. Uh, we are ready to uh, set up and write some code that would uh, load this project. And I'll, I'm going to do that next time in, um, in the open project. So for now, I'm just going to add a new class here called uh, open project. And that one will be the view model for, um, for the open project control that we have. And I'm going to continue this in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus, there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time. Until then, take care and happy game engineering.